Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for this kind introduction and the invitation. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, today, I would like to talk about an exciting project that's going on at the University of um, California in Merced at the Systems Biology and Cancer Metabolism Group. The central dogma of biology provides us with a um, basic step and a very simple and um, building blocks to um, pretty much put um, every function in um, in life together. If we would only understand those uh, building blocks, um, we could sort of like resynthesize life. Um, we have access to um, all those steps by various um, high throughput omics platforms. And in uh, systems biology, and we try to go through a cyclic procedure um, from uh, designing, hypothesizing, uh, testing, validating, and possibly eventually um, rejecting. And um, I would like to invite you on a journey through um, all of those omics platforms and um, hopefully be even um, able to uh, jump some of those uh, levels and in order to arrive at a, a comprehensive picture of disease progression. Um, we are interested in uh, melanoma. Uh, melanoma is derived from melanocytes, which are the pigment uh, giving cells in our skin. The skin is our uh, largest organ, um, which provides us with uh, maximum protection. Um, um, for the perspective of the skin, this means maximum exposure to dangerous uh, UV um, light. And uh, that's given with a genetic predisposure um, plus environmental e effect that um, uh, so, like, um, transforms um, melanocytes into melanoma. What uh, makes melanoma um, different from any other skin cancers, uh, for example, like um, squamous um, cancer or subcutaneous cancers, that they um, have the ability um, to migrate and to uh, assess uh, lymph nodes and thereby become um, a very aggressive metastatic melanoma. So, um, in 2014, in the US, um, there will be about 100,000 uh, new cases um, diagnosed with melanoma at stage four. Um, right now, there is about a 10% um, uh, uh, survival prognosis. So as we learned in the morning, it's the easy cancer, right? <laughs> so there is there's a lot to do here. Um, and if we look at the genomic landscape of uh, melanoma, it looks pretty rugged. And um, so this data is derived from uh, SNP arrays from uh, 292 um, patients. And um, what we can uh, find if we look into these um, amplifications and uh, losses, um, we, we see the um, uh, well-characterized uh, candidates like uh, BREF, NRAS, um, P10. And if you look at a... Um, patient level at single mutations, uh, we see um, here um, the uh, significance um, with a Q value. Here is the rate of the mutation, and here an abundance. Um, we um, were very surprised by the dominance um, of BRAF. Um, and in order to get a better understanding for the baseline, um, we looked at um, uh, other cancers. and. Um, maybe some other experts um, in the field can can make an assessment in glioblastoma. We see as well activating mutations um, V600E. Um, but if you look in melanoma, um, we really see that um, BRAF is hypermutated, and um, so that is really quite striking. And um, if we go back to um, the genomic landscape, um, let's have a look at these numbers. Um, if we take BRAF and NRAS together, um, we're really at 81% um, of all um, patients are affected with either BRAF or NRAS. And from an oncological um, perspective, that's a huge opportunity for um, personalized medicine. So, so this is quite unique um, for this cancer. And um, if we put uh, these... Um, uh, mutations together, we are able to uh, put driver pathways together, and um, of course, other people um, uh, 
fortunately have already recognized this um, long before and um, came up with um, uh, inhibitors uh, like um, uh, rimurafenib um, that's um, very specific um, to um, mutations in BRAF and we can um, really by looking at these um, uh, mutations we can um, richly address any um, of these um, members of the pathway and if you have a compound that's not on this list I'd be happy to add it and so what the um, what's all like the the um, common theme is that um, uh, no matter whether uh, you sort of like activate this pathway or um, you have a loss of uh, P10, you will um, activate um, transcription factors that then change um, the, uh, the activity of effector enzymes. So um, as um, you know, researchers um, interested in metabolomics, um, like we all are, that's I think where we should uh, uh, look for. So let's have a look back at our um, genomic landscape and um, in this huge amplification in, um, in chromosome 1, um, um, we were able to confirm um, PHGDH, the um, initial enzyme in the serum pathway, as uh, published in 2011 by M. Um, and co-workers. But um, also in chromosome 8, um, there's a huge amplification of MYC, and that is uh, now responsible to, um, for for what we um, really mostly see in melanoma. So um, let's switch now to the transcriptomic level and to um, guide your eye, I have sort of markers here whenever um, we switch to another omics platform. And um, so we see this uh, massive co-regulation and we looked into um, uh, promoter regions and find this um, uh, usually co-regulated uh, motive um, and that's um, mostly um, responsive, uh, re um, responsible um, to uh, see MIC. And one of the um, most upregulated gene, actually the most upregulated gene is um, um, pyruvate kinase. And if you're not impressed um, by this uh, regulation, I'm plotting this in a um, different form, just showing really the plain um, ratio of expression level. Um, this is more, a, more than a 12-fold um, upregulation. So this is huge. And um, so um, PKM2 is um, the terminal enzyme in glycolysis and therefore can be considered as the gatekeeper um, of glycolytic flux. Um, back in the 60s, um, it was uh, already shown that um, there is an isoform switch um, of pyruvate kinase going on. We're starting with uh, two different genes and in cancer in particular, the um, PKM form um, switches from um, PKM1 to PKM2, and um, the enzyme really um, is uh, a central um, player um, in, in the field, and so uh, since it's been so well studied and there are um, really a uh, number of high-profile publications, um, um, we we thought, okay, let's, let's look at this, um, but ask some different questions. How is sort of um, PKM2 um, uh, able to really um, control cancer metabolism at a global level? And, okay, I'm going to skip a couple of slides since we talked about a couple of these things here. So um, back in 2011, we, um, we asked um, uh, how the uh, Warwick effect represents a rebalancing of metabolism versus an amplification um, of metabolism while maintaining and more even increasing um, uh, respiration. And in order to do that, um, recorded uh, metabolic um, profiles um, of normal cells um, where this melanoma cells and then uh, subjected them um, to either um, physiological um, oxygen or, um, or physiological um, hypoxia. And um, we were able to um, clearly separate uh, normal cells from uh, melanoma. So that was easy, but we were um, unfortunately not able to separate the, the difference um, of the um, response to hypoxia. Um, but the world changed when we um, switched to um, flux measurements and um, hypoxia really altered the um, flux in melanoma cells um, um, much more than in melanocytes, and um, the flux measurements allowed um, for a classification of the 
uh, cell type um, as well as the condition. And um, we further were able to um, show by using NMR and, and mass spec um, really the same data um, uh, nutrients which um, um, going from um, normoxia to hypoxia and um, the same for um, glutamine. And at a systems level, um, we were able to, um, to put this together and, um, and show that when you're um, uh, trying to account for the carbon that goes into fatty acids in um, hypoxic melanoma, um, not only um, is the um, carbon coming from glucose is insufficient, the uh, carbon that goes in the oxidative um, direction is not able to contribute to the, um, to the uh, carbon that goes into fatty acids. So um, a fraction um, of the carbon has to travel through the TCA cycle in reverse. So um, I'd like to take a, a short break here and summarize um, um, what I tried to um, communicate so far. That's sort of like there's an amplification in um, normoxic melanoma going on and PKM2 is sort of like at this um, threshold between um, glycolysis and TCA cycle and going to switching to hypoxia, there is a huge decoupling. Um, um, not much of a, a loss of metabolism, but more a decoupling of glycolytic um, flux with this TCA cycle flux. Um, so um, what's up with PKM2 now? So we, um, we um, looked into um, the genetic linkage um, of um, the pyruvate kinase um, gene and see that there is a, a strong coupling um, of the intron linkage um, um, of the intronic regions around exon 9 and 10. And um, the, um, the cellular environment um, changes um, once we uh, stimulate with um, uh, EGFR. Um, there's a, a set of um, heteronuclear um, ribonuclear um, proteins that um, populates um, the DNA and actually causes um, a, a intron um, blockage that causes the splicing machinery to skip, and that is responsible um, for um, the different um, splicing. A couple of beautiful papers here. And, um, and then eventually, um, in cancer, um, PKM2 gets subscribed. So that happens at the genomic level. Um, that still doesn't account for the huge change in transcriptional response. So what is going on here? The, um, the simulation by EGFR um, um, triggers in parallel um, the beta catenin um, pathway, and then as well, um, uh, stimulation of um, histone H3 um, controls CMIC transcription, CMIC transcription controls PKM2, and but now something funny happens. PKM2 is actually a positive, uh, positive transcription regulator um, of CMIC as well, and um, then we also heard this, um, that um, HIF1 alpha also controls PKM2 and again, PKM2 um, positively controls HIF1 alpha. So what we're seeing are two um, very interesting mechanisms of control. We see um, parallel control and um, that forward control that really um, ramps up the massive response. And what is um, happening at the um, post-translational level? Um, the active uh, tetramer of PKM2 is heavily controlled by um, various um, post-installational um, modifications and um, gets uh, inactivated and split into a dimer, um, which then can translocate into the nucleus and then again um, upregulate um, various transcription factors, um, which again control the activity of the um, um, active tetramer. So, these transcription factors also control um, many other um, glycolytic genes, and that is what we see in this huge amplification of glycolysis. And in part, one of those um, pyridiadrogenase uh, kinase um, negatively controls um, the gatekeeper between um, glycolysis and, and the TCA cycle, and that is what causes this decoupling. Um, so we see again um, uh, beautiful forward control but as well first um, indications of feedback control. 
and that gets now um, a lot more utilized in uh, the metabolic control. Um, pirate kinase is um, majorly um, regulated um, by the upstream um, metabolite um, 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 fructose bisphosphate, um, but as well um, by many other um, product metabolites, for example, serin and SICA um, um, activate um, the enzyme. And in addition, um, there is a negative feedback going um, um, further upstream, and then also um, negative feedback by other product metabolite or stress factors. So what we see here, again, massive um, parallel control, but mostly feedback control. So how can we put all this together? Um, so first, we see the um, upregulation of the response. Um, we see the manifestation and then the um, stabilization. So these um, different mechanisms of control, they actually all contribute to the um, very steady disease progression that we see um, where PKM2 really becomes a metabolic master regulator. And so to sum this up, um, I um, wanted to show you how um, PKM2 is um, controlled at a genomic level um, by mutually ex exclusive splicing um, at the transcriptomic level, um, at the trans transcriptional level, I'm sorry, um, by uh, MIC, um, post-translationally um, by uh, many um, uh, different modifications um, that affect its oligomerization state. And um, metabolically, we have uh, many uh, different um, uh, control mechanisms that eventually cause the um, decoupling of glycolysis and the um, uh, TCA cycle. And that um, all comes together um, and um, plays a major part in the progression um, of, of cancer. Um, this is a nice picture, um, so maybe you guys don't know where Merced is, but it's called the Gateway to Yosemite. So that was a, a recent meeting um, there two weeks ago on systems biology. And, um, and none of the work would have been possible without a magnificent group. Um, I split this again in the different components that uh, the group members hold. I wanted to especially highlight Jiang Guan, um, who um, did the um, work on genomics, genomics and um, Roy Gupta, who did the work on and the transcriptome, the proteome. And I would like to thank you for your attention. A question for you. I mean, obviously, you've, you've mentioned that they are quite different genetic abnormalities that drive melanoma. Did you actually examine how these effects uh, would be, how PKM2 was um, in those different model systems, i.e. with BRAF mutation or with you know, P10 delete, and whether you saw any differences in the regulation and your, the response to hypoxia? Yes, so, so first of all, um, you know, coming from metabolism, um, it was uh, quite challenging to uh, sort of like uh, take a step back and go back to the genomic data and actually um, have a starting point there. And then the answer was striking. Uh, you have to consider BRAF and then maybe even um, consider two cases, BRAF versus NRAS. And then um, we had uh, studied this at the cellular level, have actually um, a, a type of cells that are exclusively mutated in BRAF versus NRAS. And um, the outcome was surprising that um, the signaling pathways, they actually all come together and are integrated at a transcriptional level. So that um, kind of, um, they were not uh, very different at a metabolic level because we had this common transcriptional integrator. Um, so I hope to answer the question like that. Yeah, that's a great talk. So. A um, uh, question is um, because uh, you you you, you describe EGFR regulator PKM2 actually that is a GBM model glioblastoma not a melanoma model. So, so my question is uh, whether you found it, but you, you but you present the melanoma model. So wondering uh, is the EGFR actually upregulate PKM2 promote PKM2 can enter into a uh, nuclear that can promote you know semi whatever gene transcription. That is PKM2 transcription activity. Uh, that is beyond the glycolysis. This is not, not, not uh, this is PKM2 have two functions, analytic glycolytic, right? Convert the PEP to pyruvate. The different function. 
So I wonder, because, but you mix together, I wonder whether you made a noma, pick him to uh, localize in, in the nuclear. Only in nuclear is transferring activity because you, you, you combine both, right? I'm, I'm wondering whether you melanoma, I didn't heard anything, whether, whether melanoma tissue or cell line, PKM2, can enter into nuclear. The, the short answer is yeah. yes. Um, the, um, you, you are right that um, there are sort of um, many different uh, uh, model systems uh, have been used um, for PKM2, y yes. but it is, yeah. If you look um, at the common denominator, um, nuclear uh, uh, localization of the dimer, and right. then as well, um, um, sort of like the, um, the co-binding to um, other transcription factors, that is really cancer independent. I, I know, so but, but, but you describe melanoma. I, I'm questioning whether in melanoma, PKM2 ever, uh, ever to be found in nuclear. Localization. This is yes. key. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. You can antibody like you can uh, really very clearly. Uh, yeah. Do you saw that? Right. Yeah. Subcellular okay. fractionation okay. and 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 proof. Yeah. So another question is because melanoma is mostly B rough mutation, right? So right. whether being B rough mutation can drive PKM2 uh, expression. Can Can you repeat that? Yeah. B, whether B rough mutation. Can upregulate PKM2. That I think this is a connection f from melanoma to PKM2. It's. I mean, in the end, we are yeah. looking at the same pathways as you do. Um, um, so whether the receptor tyrosine kinase, you know, in breast cancer is is HER2 or um, you know, in your case, EGFR. Um, it it really is um, the same driver pathway that. Um, um, PKM2 is, is such a critical enzyme for glycolysis, um, it will always be um, present. Thanks, thanks.